so good afternoon everyone and thanks for joining in uh, myself nishant kashyap i am editor of tagma times magazine and your host for today's session on behalf of tagma management i invite you all to the 14th edition of tool talk and this is edition is special because it is happening after gap of two months we took a break uh, from tool talk because of uh, demo india show and as you all know it was grand success and i'm sure most of you must have visited or participated in the exhibition as well so uh, if you have attended the previous tool talks you must have seen uh, many speakers coming from automotive uh, you know background automotive industries be it oem or tier 1 suppliers but you know the industry is so was that uh, there is still much more to learn there is still many things to know and explore business opportunities and to discuss all these things we have uh, mr satyabrata das senior general manager of isc group of india uh, mr welcome mr das yeah thank you uh, thank you nishant i think uh, my voice is clear to all right perfect perfect yeah it is perfectly clear Okay. right so uh, just to uh, introduce mr das mr das has done a diploma and uh, uh, post diploma in tool and die making uh, from cttc bhuneshwar and after that he completed btech from pune he has been working in auto industry for past 25 years and uh, serving different fields like npd strategic sourcing supply chain management and tooling in his career he has worked with companies like verok engineering tata motors johnson control electronics and tata auto, auto components and presently working at isc india as senior general manager heading the tooling division so uh, mr satvrata welcome again yeah thank you thank you nishant uh, thanks for the introduction uh, good afternoon all uh, at the outset uh, i am I must uh, thank to Tagma for creating and uh, facilitating such a platform where we can share our knowledge, learning, and trends in the tooling industry. Particularly, I belong to the same fraternity. Right. I uh, I hope most of uh, our listeners are from the tooling industry, and I am sure about it. And uh, they are either entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs. So, welcome to the Tool Talk. Uh, my name is Satyabrat Das, and uh, my introduction is already given by Nishant. So I will move on. You know, if I talk about uh, the tooling market uh, uh, types, I mean uh, it's not only the dies and mold. I consider the forging, zig and fixture, uh, machine tools and gauges. I combine all these to the tooling market, and uh, the the end user is I think anybody who who is in the industry like uh, automotive, electronics. uh bit be electrical aerospace uh, marine defense plastics whatever you you call this tooling industry is uh, is uh, the pillar for them uh i feel uh, proud to be part of this industry and uh, you know being a part of uh, this positive changes uh, this industry is seeing today uh, uh i still remember you know when i started my uh, engineering i i mean the, this diploma in tool and die making from central tool room and training center uh there was a say, the, my my lecturer say that time that uh, welcome to uh, central tool room training center bhubneshwar uh, soon you are going to work for mother of all industry that is tooling and i still carry that value yes this industry is mother for the all industry uh well uh, i we, uh, we all know uh, the potential of this industry and the value uh, of this industry which i i discussed uh, just now Uh, we must also aware of the figures this industry brings in to the indian economy and to the global economy i will read out something for you i think this will sound good to the ears the global tooling market this was published in the hindustan times a few days before i'm just reading that for you the global tooling market size was valued at 212500 million dollars by 2020 the post it is the the pandemic times and is projected to reach a 439 i mean uh, 1994 millions by 2030 and uh, registering a cagr that is uh, what you call a compound annual growth uh, rate at 7.5% for 21 to 30 so that's really a really uh, interesting uh, phase we are passing through and if i talk to uh, talk about the indian tooling industry value uh, to raise uh, i mean uh, it's a uh, around uh, 26000 crores by 2025 and as per the tagma uh, the data which was uh, was uh, published i think uh, it is close to 
18,000 crores, if I remember correctly, and it is 70% uh, of the demands are from the uh, Indian uh, tooling industry and 35% uh, are being uh, imported. So I think uh, when we go on and when uh, Nisant uh, throw me more uh, questions, we will go deep into the subject. Uh, over to you, Nisant. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Das. Thanks for, uh, you know, giving importance to this industry and charting on all the expectations as well. So uh, to the audience, uh, at the end of this session, uh, you, you may ask some questions to Mr. Satpurita Das. Uh, for the asking thing, you can just post your question in the chat box that Mr. Das can address at the end of this session. So let's start, Mr. Das. So uh, just to set the tone of this session, uh, can you uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, your company and its activities, a uh, little bit more about its operation in Indian market? Yeah, Nisant, uh, yeah, that's the right thing. I think uh, if people should know about my company and uh, I work for a company now, which the name is IAC, International Automotive India. Uh, it's a multinational company and uh, the headquarter being at US and we are having global footprints uh, in the automotive interior business. Uh, in India, our customers are Mahindra and Mahindra. Um, it's uh, Maruti Suzuki, uh, Volvo Aisher, uh, FML, etc. They are the few of our customers and uh, our uh, anchor customer is uh, Mahindra and Mahindra. Uh, regarding our footprint in India, we have our uh, headquarter in Pune. It is at Banir. And we have uh, five uh, plant across India. We have two manufacturing plants uh, at Pune, one at uh, Nasik, uh, one at Manesar, and one at Bangalore recently we started. Uh, talking about my tooling uh, business, I think we source close to about uh, 150, 200 uh, moles per annum. And this uh, data is, uh, you know, it's for past five years. And uh, uh, with the, the size of mold which we source is uh, something uh, uh, vary between 50 tons to uh, 2,800 tons. We work with uh, most of the Indian tool makers and um, uh, of course with the global uh, tool makers. Over to you, Nisant. Right, right. So uh, that's nice to know about your sector, you know, IC activities in India. So moving on to the next question, uh, can you chat out some of the emerging trends that are happening in the global versus the Indian automotive industry? Yeah, uh, Nisan, that's a nice, nice question. We should be, we should be always, you know, up with the trends. Uh, uh, before I, I talk about the trend, Nisan, the first uh, I will just uh, uh, talk about some of the figures. I think figures speak uh, right. You know, if you talk about the Indian automotive industry, uh, specifically, you know, the largest uh, tractor manufacturer we are. The two-wheeler manufacturer, we are the largest. Three-wheeler manufacturing, we are the largest. And we are the largest uh, bus manufacturer in the automotive. Uh, the third largest, uh, you know, that, uh, what do you call that? Heavy truck manufacturer. Fourth largest car manufacturer after, I think, uh, uh, China, America, and uh, you know, Japan. And this industry is, uh, you know, uh, contributing to uh, 35 million uh, employments we are generating. 7.1 is the, is the contribution to the GDP. And so we are at a very, very nice phase, uh, Nisan. When I say we talk about the, you know, uh, demographic dividend, this uh, we are a youth population. When every uh, part of the world is uh, aging, India is a uh, uh, people are, you know, the, the younger people uh, in India are, uh, are are more in comparison to any part of uh, of of the globe. So it's been said that, that by 2030. Uh, uh, by 2040, we saw our uh, our uh, uh, this uh, uh, younger younger populations is going to be growing growing. So we will we are more into more powerful. I mean more young people working in the industry. Uh, the biggest trend which is now talked about is uh, you know uh, the whole world is now talking about uh, renewable energy. The whole world is talking about the um, uh, uh, this electric vehicles and uh, yeah, I am also hopeful for that. Uh, because considering the the the, the frame, the, I mean the the direction of the government, which is talking about, we are we are supposed to reach a two-digit, uh, you know, uh, trillion in economy, or you uh, or to the largest uh, single-digit figure we are talking about. So uh, yes, we need to be in the train, and EV is the EV is the thing which people are looking for, and uh, you know that's that's what is going to be uh, the game changer. That's one. But uh, particularly if I talk about, uh, you know, if I refer to the data, which was uh, published on uh, Start Us, there is, a, there is a company who does the survey on this. 
So if I talk about the automotive trend uh, today, by 2022 January, this data was published uh, uh, in the uh, in their website, which talks about uh, you know 21 percent of the industry is working on the autonomous vehicle. That is that is that is number one area where uh, the technology is moving. Connectivity cars are 18 percent are working. 17 percent are working on the electrification. Four, 14 percent is working on the shared mobility and. Uh, in the big data analysis, uh, you know, these are the trend, which is 6% are working. Uh, if you talk about the HMI part, the human machine interface, 5% are working on that. Blockchain, 4% are working. So I'm throwing this data just to say that where the trend is moving, it's no more in the in uh, what we say that just, just do it on time, give a quality. That, that complete paradigm shift which is, which is coming in the automotive industry. People are working on the artificial intelligence, 7% are working on this. Uh, IoT 4% people are working and 3D printing people are working on 4% on, on uh, of the industry. So these are the top 10 trends that we are, we are supposed to see and the, this industry is going through, uh, is, is going to witness these changes. So Nisant, I think uh, these, are, these, are the, these are the top 10 trends which I, I discussed. Over to you, Nisant. Right, right. So you discussed 10 trends and also highlighted the, you know, uh, the uh, importance of Indian automotive industry a lot of largest word you use that was you know very good to hear yes, yes. and so uh, well these trends are shaping up definitely it will have impact on the component suppliers and then subsequently to the tooling suppliers so uh, yes. how how a global component industry companies like isc group or any tier one suppliers are gearing up to adopt these changes taking place in automotive oems or automotive industry see uh uh, my answer would be like this, you know, uh, we have to unlearn a lot of things and we have to relearn a lot of things. That is how I would like to approach this question, be it be any company, any automotive company. Um, you know, over a period, we have, uh, I, I would call this relation between uh, a supplier or a tool maker or an OEM, uh, it has to be a very symbiosis relation. I mean, it has to be very symbiotically, it has to be managed. When I say symbiotic, you know, the, there has to be an interaction between two or more uh, different uh, uh, species. When I talk about uh, symbiotic relations, I'm, I'm, I'm meant to say that uh, uh, they cannot uh, survive without each other. So that's the kind of relation we have, uh, a, a, a tier one or a OEM or a tier two. So they have to be so, so symbiotically connected. So, you know, with the train, uh, <clears throat> we have to change ourselves. That is, that is, the, that is the key. And, you know, Today, people are not talking about uh, changes. I will, when you ask more questions, I will answer this also. Because change itself is changing so fast. People are calling it as you know, disruption every time the people are using the word disruption. So probably this industry, uh, what we are talking about, the tier one, we are migrating from a labor intensive industry. We are moving towards a automation India, uh, automation. Uh, we are moving towards the automation. And we are going through a transit. So we have to adapt these changes with a faster pace. So these industries are getting geared up. I will give you some examples. Uh, I mean, it's not particularly from the automotive. I will talk to you from the different area also. See, uh, uh, the, the companies like you, you uh, I'll give you the example of the company like Ola. So they have completely disrupted the, the supply chain uh, system. I mean, the, the car, the, the vehicle is being, uh, the scooter is being produced at their plant in Bangalore and it is getting delivered to your doorstep. So the complete supply chain is, is disrupted here. So this is, this is what the, the, uh, the, the tier ones are doing. Uh, moving from the automotive, industry, if you go to a food industry, if you talk about the mother's dairy, the mother's dairy, the company, the, this company have adopted the technology to that extent that you know this is a uh, this is a temperature intensive. Uh, I mean, if the temperature goes up, this food is going to. I mean, they be, they be, this as a they, this is going to be spoiled. So Mother Dairy, they have they have in, installed this uh, air conditioning system which is talking to your outside temperature and uh, adjusting the temperature inside the plant. And for the, the, this AC when they are going to fail. They are, they, they, that is also being through AI, they are getting those data. So this industry, I mean, uh, this industry uh, is adapting this and uh, this is going to adapt all these things in a faster way. Uh, this predicting, uh, I said the predict, prediction of the machine failure, that is one I, I, I talked about. If I talk about the shoes industry, if you talk about uh, uh, talk the companies like Nike and uh, companies like what you call that um, Adidas, 
to take the example of adidas the complete german german player the complete plant is now from china and the complete deliveries are being done from the automated plant there is no human they are printing the shoes through using the 3d printings and that is being commercialized you can order your shoes you can the shoes are manufactured to your bmi bought massive base so this is the phase i i always talk on this, that the time which you have taken to see the industrial two three and now four probably the five will come first okay this industry is getting up and this industry will keep their speed up. so the only thing is that we will match the speed or we are going to lose the bus over to you nisan right 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 so we have to learn and unlearn a lot of things that's that's the key here yes so uh, with all these changes what role tooling industry is going to play how they have to you know do this unlearn and learn and what they all have, what all they have to adopt in their system their manufacturing process so so uh, also uh, if I, there was a, some uh, some uh, uh, you know uh, the voice was not clear so yeah, the last thing we check in is that you are talking how how this tooling industry role of tooling industry you are talking yeah, about. Yeah, role of tooling industry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Nissan, got it. Uh, I think this would be an um, ideal question. I might sound like uh, giving a lecture on this, uh, but uh, on a serious note, uh, I must mention that you know the tooling industry. Uh, we all know that it's a complex industry, and uh, they are playing a major role. But this uh, contribution to the industry are sometimes being ignored. I want to underline this: this, this contribution of the, this tooling industry, these people, whatever they do for their customers, they are sometimes being ignored. So, while we are, accept that this industry has got a lot of things to do, they have a lot of things to do uh, to contribute. But at the same time, you know, acknowledgement and appreciations are something which is FOC, free of cost. If somebody is doing something, then we should do that. The vital role to pay um, uh, either, uh, is now to put your base foot forward. This is the time the tooling industry can put their base foot forward because there is a slowdown. Our, if you say, if you, if you still, you agree or disagree, but within the lines, China was a was looked as a competition to this tooling, and now since uh, because of the situation, China is at rest. So this is the time when tooling industry. Can uh, can you know uh, take the opportunity to uh, go? We serve from I mentioned that we 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 serve from you know from the aerospace to medical to every everywhere the tooling uh, tooling industry is serving, and this uh, uh, not to repeat it again, but you know figures sometimes talks that uh, you are we are we are importing seventy oh, sorry we are uh, importing thirty percent of the molds. So uh, my uh, the role of this industry I mean the responsibility of this industry has to be this. Uh, we should uh, concentrate on reducing these uh, imports and uh, increase our export. Uh, if I if I if I want to put it on the that way, because if you don't make inside, if you don't make up uh, tools inside, in, and and uh, with these opportunities being uh, there, I think this is going to be taken out. This opportunity will be taken by 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 somebody uh, else. Uh, see, uh, our industry. If I talk about uh, tooling industry, you know, uh, we have a long way and. Uh, now uh, we can make uh, any complex tool nissan you talk about we our industry is capable to do it there is no doubt on this uh, our capabilities okay so uh, so uh, you know only thing is that uh, there has to be some kind of help from uh, the 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 agencies government we will talk it if you uh, if time permits on that if the questions are on that line but we need need this there is other responsibility uh, which i would like to uh, talk on is the investment of this tool room, so you know, they are, to get a five access machine, these people are are investing like anything. For getting a deep hole drilling, we are investing. Uh, the people are uh, investing like anything on this. So the it's not only the import of uh, the the uh, the tools, but the import of the machine is also an issue in India. So while we take the roles to ma manufacture the tools, at the sometime the uh, the machine manufacturing industry should also take the responsibility to make the best quality machine available in India so that this industry can do this. Indian tooling industry, I, I mean, uh, the other thing which I, uh, which I would like to emphasize is that you know, this industry is in, in, is in a distributed way or it is in a scattered way. So this industry also need to come closer together, talk to each other and, uh, and you know, 
uh, today uh, at one side you know you see that a lot of tool makers in india they 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 have invested but there is no business uh, to them so we should also talk and bring them up and so that this is this is a kind of thing like you know something like give and take uh, we the only the roles and uh, roles cannot be defined to the tooling fraternity there are a lot of things which need to be done uh, by 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 others also nisant right okay so you spoke about uh, you know indian touring industry is being at par with the global touring industry and they are able to make any kind of tools complex tools large tools anything however you also uh, you know pointed out that uh, there is a capacity constraint and uh, these companies need to come together to you know grab the bigger yes. opportunity yes yes so yes, uh, my yes. next question is uh, since you have a experience working with overseas tool makers from countries like china and taiwan and korea so please mm -hmm. share your experience working with you know overseas tool makers working uh, versus the indian tool makers what difference did you observe okay 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 that's a nice question nisan nisan uh, yeah. with a with a note i must uh, say that the indian tool makers are no way less than china and korea um, uh, tool makers that is that is that is my uh, my observations because uh, you right. know the ecosystem which is being developed in china it is uh, it, it has taken a long time okay this industry has been supported by their governments okay and there were clusters which were made given that that condition if i put uh, such conditions if i put such kind of clusters in india if i give such kind of support to my indian tool makers this industry is going to you know rock i will say because with the limited resources what we do what we produce is at par with any china or korea i, I don't wanted to mention those names but yes i have seen this for comparing somebody you need to have something so yeah we have taken china and korea but uh, my 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 underlining is that indian tool makers are no way lesser than them that is point number 1 uh, you right. know our tool manufacturing process with a limited uh, high end machines that i spoke uh, you know uh, a tool maker will will buy a machine of 50 lakhs and uh, you know uh, that is that is a pain so these this machine cost has to come down but with this limited uh, we make a better tooling uh, you know uh, in the industry uh, standards so, the machine manufacturer i i mentioned that uh, you know they have to they have to help us today if i talk you uh, talk about uh, how many tool makers you see that they have a uh, you know mold flow seat with them that is uh, the, the, because because it is cost 50 lakhs they they, they think that should i invest in a mold flow uh, mold flow station or should i invest in a in a machine which is going to give me a so this is this is a kind of chicken and chicken and egg story that what should come first so okay. uh, so knowledge the the risk of accuracy i mean with the knowledge of all these things with with this technology the risk of you know uh, getting uh, i mean it's not the risk we will have a better part which can do better tool which can be produced that is one second thing, and the third thing which i would like to emphasize is the uh, the the steel industry nishan the, the the steel industry in india uh, i mean i i i, I would uh, i would like to say that they are not up to the mark with uh, with the china i uh, when because of there are a lot of things we can, which we can discuss upon because this industry was some way with the uh, with the government raj at the, 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 that time the license raj and now it has been you know given to the the to the uh, people of the, this has been privatized so things are improving but but the steel availability in india and you know every time uh, the cost of the steel if i compare with uh, india and cost of the steel steel i compare with uh, china or uh, or korea this industry is really struggling for that is but we must okay. um, and the, the, the other part is the train ma manpower uh, yeah the availability of the train manpower that this problem has recently after covid this has been uh, popped up so nisan i expect uh, you know sometime uh, when i am there in uh, tool talk after some years or if i am there so i would like there sometime this question should be reframed to me and uh, people should ask me a question how indian tool industry exceeded the global players like china and korea and taiwan this is my 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 expectation sometime i should answer this question is and over to you that would be nice to ask and i would definitely like to have you again on tool talk after <laughs> a few years when we have exceeded that's a you know goal for all of us yeah nisan right so you chatted out you know your experience working with the overseas and the indian tool makers uh, so now uh, so moving to the next question you definitely must be uh, having must be having some sort of evolution factor before you you know 
uh, onboard any uh, tool makers as a supplier for your particular your company. So what yes. are those you know factors, uh, four or five factors, whatever number that uh, those are there, and uh, if you can chart out those uh, you know number factors. Yes, yes, Nisan. I got your question. Uh, see, uh, you know, uh, you talked about four or five factors, but this industry is always being measured with three factors till now. Okay. That is that is quality, cost, and delivery. If the quality is good, cost is good, uh, delivery is good. Yeah, you are there in the board. That is that is how the the things were till uh, till uh, I mean today people are working. But now with the you know uh, the tool rooms and tool makers, these are these are something which is taken for granted. You know, if you are not okay. delivering the quality, cost, and delivery, you are out of the industry. So that is not not something I am looking for. I am looking for what are the technology you are bringing into your your tool room. I, if you if you, if I talk today, I I go and see people using a VMC a five axis machine to machine a core and cavity, and when they are going to match it up, they are using a grinder on that. So so you invest on a technology, and finally you land up in doing a grinder uh, using a grinder. So that is not something I'm looking for. Very very clear. The lead time and uh, quality meeting the global standards uh, are major considerations for me. Uh, while I say that our tool makers are capable of making it, but yes, they certainly need some guidance on this. The experienced people has to guide them. To and you know every tool maker is not traveling outside India just to see the tools, or every tool maker doesn't have a approach. To go and see in the OEM what kind of tools are making, so they should they should be taught. I think we are the people those who are supposed to teach them what are the things are going on in the global market. Such quality is are ex, uh, expected. Then dealing with uh, the qualitative changes, the complexity with higher accuracy and efficient processes. These are some of the thing I would like to have because you know. Um, Although I hate those words like ECN, which is coming, uh, the, but but you can't avoid it. The ECN has to be there, and uh, when there there are, there are changes, there are changes coming. This toolmaker has to be very flexible to adapt that. Okay, so uh, again, it is a, I, I will say chicken and egg story because if they have only one machine, they will not take your tools to uh, to uh, on priority. If they have multiple machines, probably they will consider. So this is one of the fact I I. I uh, yeah. post covid nisan i have learned that this uh, industry was struggling like anything for uh, uh, the permanent manpower the permanent man okay. manpower uh, you know where i that was the time when i used to travel to uh, mumbai i have traveled to a lot of my tool makers i have troubled them for for at that time because there was a huge pressure on me from my customer so uh, during the covid these people went off to their village and this has happened everywhere if you talk about china this has also happened so having some permanent manpower at your a key location is really important like design yeah like your your assembly line like that that is that is uh, that is one the last thing probably which i would which strike to my mind is uh, the the kind of uh, service and support that you extend to uh, your um, your customer you know if we buy a tool not for one day the tool has to work for 7 years time and in that and uh, you know this uh, Uh, molding plants are going under a tremendous pressure because there is a quick change of tools uh, 250 numbers produced and change the tools change the, in between if they go for a breakdown that is a huge pain to them so if there is a breakdown i, I know that you cannot avoid it but how can you quickly respond to it so probably these are few of the things which which uh, we consider before you know considering the uh, the tool maker nishan right 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 thanks so uh... as a you know head of uh, tooling division at ic group you must be interacting a lot with a lot of tool makers as you also said in your uh, you know last previous answers as well yes. so uh, since there are a lot of experience working with these guys uh, what are your expectations from the indian tool makers according to you where they need to improve what all they need to do to you know uh, improve and serve large companies yes yes uh, uh... yeah this and that's right that, that, that's a uh, right question i think uh, the indian uh, dye and mold industry is uh, that the indian dye and mold industry i mean um, we are uh, we are contributing to the economy and uh, so there has to be a expectation from our industry so that is nothing our mean expecting from us so the first thing which i talked about uh, is uh, the disruption yeah. so 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 this industry uh, we need to uh, you know well, wherever we go today with this this what changes chase us that there is a disruption coming in in this industry that industry so this industry is also uh, uh, going to see this disruption 
when i say there is nothing uh, uh, you know good bad or ugly but uh, you think uh, the the management the traditional management system of our tooling industry has to uh, go for a change i i uh, i think that is that is one is my biggest expectation from this uh, tooling um, uh, native techniques which we use we were using it for past many a years and uh, we think uh, we must take a holistic view and uh, uh, i would say holistic 360 degree view and consider Uh, the technology over the traditional uh, method of tooling uh, you know now we are talking about yesterday i was uh, there in a uh, in a in a uh, is a uh, forum where they were talking this mold flow is talking to uh, ai artificial intelligence and they are they are, they are they they are deciding how the cooling system has to be there i am here to see that but it was there in the talk i i doubt some day with the ai and the machine learning i think uh, Uh, this industry is going to see the mold design is being done by the by the by, by the robots or by by the by the computers. I think that is the yeah, kind yeah. of changes we are we are expecting. So things are changing, Nisant. I think I I uh, repeatedly I say that we are in the, we are seeing industry i for i i for four dot o now, and this generation is going to see five dot o also because this is so rapidly changing. We should deal with the complex uh, uh, you know uh, that uh, complexity with the accuracy. That is. that is the speed of uh, speed and uh, and uh, i am talking about and the complexity that you know uh, today if i talk uh, if if you talk about bigger tools either top pad or you talk about uh, door trims you talk about the bumper tools you know these tools are being today also these are being imported so this is where with the i talked in the previous that we need to uh, focus on this that we need to bring down uh, we need to make larger tools in house focus on delivery is something uh, we need to you need to focus because um, you know uh, the time that has the, that is that is no more there that three months lead time for making a tool i mean company like tesla is talking that we are we are going to manufacture our car within 18 months the ola is saying five months we are going to launch our scooters so this is something which is sounding weird to us and we need to uh, match the speed of where the, this automotive industry is uh, is going forward uh skill yes we have to do the skill and uh, nisant i the, i want to emphasize on one point this is the industry where women working labors i mean not the labors i'm sorry to use this word women employment is very less in our industry and we need to talk we need to uh put more women into the work if i say if you talk about uh, china i think uh, uh close to 60% of their women are working in the industry and if i talk about uh, india we are only 20% So uh, these are few of my expectations. This uh, industry should uh, work on. Nisant, over to you. Okay, so one nice point you raised was about uh, having more women in manufacturing industry. Yes, definitely. Yes, we yes, should yes, we should have some speaker and forum for that as well. So while you talk about uh, you know your expectations from the tool makers, uh, I'm sure. Uh, you are aware and you also mentioned also that a lot of things are dependent on the government and policies as well i'm Because, losing you uh, sant i'm losing you yeah can you hear me yeah now it's loud yeah so i was just talking that uh, you you spoke about your expectations from the tooling industry and yes, the tooling yes. industry if it has to grow definitely they need lot of government and policy supports as well so yes, uh, yes, yes. Do you have any suggestions or expectations from the government as well to support this industry? Yes, as a taxpayer, yeah, I have a lot of expectations from the government. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so that's a nice question. I mean, you know, uh, uh, starting from your nineteen ninety one is the year when we we started. Uh, you know, that that time the government has uh, uh, allowed us. Am I audible? Yes. Am I audible? Yeah. Okay. So that yeah. is the time when you know this FDI and all that. That time the government has started. This government, uh, I mean, this invest in India, make make in India. This uh, what do you call that? Uh, production uh, linked incentives. These are few of the heavy words being ta- talked about in the industry. I think these are yeah. This is also helping out. Um, I'm I'm not criticizing that. Yeah, I'm in support of that. uh we are also a largest you know digital economy we are making uh, yeah, that, that's what is going on that is that's what is being uh, you know now uh, everybody is talking about so uh, so yes uh, why not we i uh, i have a big expectation uh, from the from the government towards this industry see what i'm what i try to bring in is uh, yeah, in next uh, few years you see the urbanization will go up you know uh, the, the people will migrate a lot of people will migrate from the village to Uh, to the to the city 
and we have to make more city today we are you know india is uh, as good as 24 uh, states i mean countries in the you are uh, in the uh, in the europe so it's such a big uh, big uh, geographically if we talk about that so, so people coming to the uh, to the um, uh, when i say to the town the urbanization goes up you know the today the vehicle per thousand if i talk in india it is only 22 numbers that's 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 uh, that's how uh, the the the, uh, the distribution of the vehicle is if you talk about uh, us i think it is close to 900 if I, my, my figure is right and if you are talking about china it is also in the three digit i don't remember uh, now it's i'm not recalling that so with a growing uh, you know uh, the automotive industry which brings in all changes to the industry i mean uh, uh, we are we are we have a lot of opportunity to grab in but if we don't have a cluster which i i, I said earlier this industry is 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 uh, is going to uh, is not going to meet the speed if there is a no uh, i mean you know this is a uh, we are in this is a capex is going more into this industry and when when you infuse such a capex and you are waiting for your uh, uh, you know turnaround this the time of 3 months 6 months so there has to be some relaxation given to given to this industry interest rate at least you can you can uh, I, i expect that the this industry should be treated differently and the interest rate is something which needs to be uh, the inverted duty structure which uh, which is one uh, there's a challenge uh, in accessing the finance that is uh, there i think the ease of doing business is is being lot talked about but i don't know how far this industry is getting benefited out of that then uh, i talked about this this uh, uh, this uh, steel industry uh, the cost of steel and i think the, that is also one which uh, which needs a support uh, the, while this industry is putting their best effort and the government should uh, support this industry and uh, you know uh, the kind of incentives uh, the people in china are, and korea are getting i, I think at least uh, i should uh, see that the same kind of things as to uh you know people in um, india so tool makers should get it you know sometimes i i you know people cannot just give their uh, uh, house uh, as a collateral and give get a machine to start a tool room that is something which uh, i don't uh, i mean uh, that's something which i see very popularly in this industry kisi ne apna ghar rakha and got two machines to start up that is not the way the business should go on okay that's the kind of pressure is there so i i think government has got lot to do with this industry when the expectations are more i think we should facilitate uh, this industry also nisan right 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 so you have lot of expectations from government of course all of us are having lot of expectations from government and as you said this is a strategic industry and it should be treated as such so uh, moving on to the next question uh, just couple of more question from my side before we take questions from the audience uh yep so what kind of growth you foresee for the indian touring companies in coming years okay okay mr now much time we have based on that i will answer my questions i think we can we have five uh, five minutes about okay so i'll be quick uh, you are talking about this what are the yeah. so nisan uh, if i if i talk about the industry today no uh uh the automotive segment is expected to grow at 8% everywhere there is a talk on this the con the consumer durability uh, durable industry i think the number is talking about uh, 9% and plastic industry by 12% so so with this uh, you know uh, the tooling uh, business or the tooling industry uh, 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 should uh, grow and uh, they, they are ready to take this opportunity i think we have already discussed that what are the things what are the points where uh, government and uh, the machine manufacture machine tool manufacturer has to help this industry then the growth of the tool makers are uh, you know protected with the opportunity available in the market with uh, increased demand of uh, two wheelers and white goods the uh, the the reputation of the molds will be more which can leverage the growth of this uh, our tool makers um i talked about handling more complex uh, product which require most uh, sophisticated dies and mold manufacturing uh, them and the technology tool uh technology the tool makers bring in to ma make such tools will uh, uh decide the growth factor of our tool maker then adopting the technology like you know a uh, lot of lot of uh, tool makers i have seen they are uh, to match the timing they are using the 3d printed uh, metal inserts they are using the conformal cooling with 
the metal inserts so we 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 we, we have seen this uh, in the industry but you know the scale of this has to has, has a bigger role we 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 i need to use this uh, not only for one or two tools because if i talk uh, you know the industry this this people are not much using this uh, this kind of technology so we should embrace this technology so that we 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 take, take this uh, uh the, we, we we take this uh, industry uh, forward um, my expectation is uh, that you limit your number of trials and reduce the time of uh, manufacturing, make it first time right. So that is what the concept has to come in the tooling industry. I think uh, today we conduct four or five trials. We struggle for the machines. I think that is that is killing your bottom line. So that is where we, you need to we need to focus. We need to uh, uh, the uh, you know people has to there has there should be some you know uh, kind of good investor who should come in and. Uh, fund this uh, this business i of uh, tooling so that this business grows nisan right right okay so i think just one more one last question from my side uh, of course you have covered this in your previous answers in bits and pieces but if i have to ask you a uh, five key suggestions that you have to make to the indian tool makers Okay, I have talked about uh, I think more than that, but I have to recollect yeah. what uh, what five top. Maybe five you can just are. list out top uh, five that you feel. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's okay. I think the investment in the technology that is the first thing. I mean, this industry need uh, very badly that. I mean, most of our tools or tool makers doesn't have us sporting place today, Nisant. Um, uh, so they should understand what is of. I mean. Uh, uh, I'm wrong here because they understand what is the use of a spotting press, but they don't have a affordability. So there, are, there has to be help extended to them. So investment in technology is number one takeaway for uh, me. Train and uh, retain your staff. That is the that is uh, what I want to emphasize because you know uh, I see people moving from one toolmaker to other toolmaker for some little amount of money. So you know the la that is something the last thing when people leave our organization for money i think barring money you can have uh, other 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 uh, uh, factors which you should bring in so that uh, these uh, people are getting retained uh, so that's a big thing uh, people should work on um the third thing if i say about that you know we have to unlearn a lot of things which we have learned in the past uh, i mean this might sound like something uh, you know uh, unfamiliar but yeah that is the fact the way, the traditional way of making the toolings, we have to unlearn those things. We have to learn, learn the things. We have to, you know, format our systems. We have to adapt these changes. 18 months if our OEM is running to make a make a car, we should run to make our tool bin within months time or uh, or or 45 days time. That is how what the speed should be, and the industry should be working together towards that. Uh, it's a big challenge. You have talked about fourth. I think I talked about third point. Uh, fourth is yes, I am talking about uh, you. We need to embrace the industry 4.0. That is must. Yeah, I was going through a data that uh, you know uh, the 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 global tool makers they have already started. The machine is talking to them. They have the data collecting throughout the day. What is that hour being used for the machine? Uh, what are the free hours available with the machine? What kind of uh, errors that machine has gone in the past? So. Uh, if you if you if you spend your uh, you invest on a five axis machine you invest crores in that machine and the machine is idle for hour or two hours or day or two I think you know what's the what's the kind of uh, uh, you know loss you are going to incur on that so it is better the technology is there we should uh, I know today the cost is uh, every time I speak uh, the, the affordability of the tool maker is something which is needs to be addressed very fast but yes at the same time we should embrace the changes. Nice. Yeah. Uh, the last uh, thing which is is that the, you should know your customer first. That is the uh, the name of your customer may remain same to today. You say, "Yehi mera customer tha last time. Yehi wo customer hai mere saath mein paanch saal se kam karta hai." But generation and management in the customers are also changing. We change uh, with needs are no. We need to also demonstrate the same level of changes. We don't. We can't take today the customer as granted. You know, we have got customer as a lot of option. So you need to look at the customer at a you know with a different spec. You have to wear a different hat to look at the customer today because the customer name is only same today, but the customer's requirement, their expectation is different. Probably these are the five things I would uh, like to uh, reiterate, Nisant. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for those uh, you know suggestions and sharing your experience <laughs> with us today. Uh, and I'm sure the points you have covered and suggestions you have made will help definitely help the. Indian tooling fraternity for your present year.
Yeah, so uh, there is a question from Mr. Vankates. Uh, he is asking how is tier 1 company supporting Indian tool makers apart from OEMs like uh, M&M and all that. How tier 1 is supporting the tool makers? Yeah, that's what I talked about. Uh, you know, uh, uh, there are expectations from the tier 1. Like, uh, you know, I, I say that uh, uh, when the this investments are coming from the tool maker in a larger way, uh, we we uh, the tier one has a responsibility to support them. We just can't uh, wash our hand by saying giving them a thirty percent advance and uh, everything is left out to them. So yes, we are coming up with uh, the technology like I mentioned that you know every tool maker cannot fly and see what is happening up uh, outside the globe. Uh, outside the uh, India, sorry. So we 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 bring in those uh, those information to them. That is point number one. Point number two, uh, you know, we uh, we are support we are we are supporting them with the business and we are supporting with uh, them the te the technology know how. I think that is how we are supporting them. And uh, uh, I I know I know the 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 answer which uh, which uh, they are expecting is far more than uh, what I'm talking now. But right now I cannot comment on that. Over to you, Nishan. Right. Uh, now there is another question from Dr. Anup Chavan. Uh, this is related to defense mm -hmm. sector. So he asks mm -hmm. how Indian defense sector will make impact on Indian mold manufacturers in the process of developing indigenous product. Uh, how the defense, how the tool makers are going to help uh, defense uh, to make the indigenous product? Uh, no, actually, question. is asking how defense sector will make impact on Indian tooling tool manufacturers when they start, you know, developing indigenous. So I think, products. Uh, no, I think uh, the question is right. This uh, uh, Indian defense uh, organization or the defense industry is not untouched because they are also using the to, uh, the, the the tooling industry is also supporting them. So uh, I mean. Uh, with the technology available with us and uh, with the with the you know the kind of requirement if i if i understand the question say if it, we need to make our indi uh, uh, the product in india uh, with uh, i think uh, uh, this is this is uh, the i mean uh, we can help each other by by bringing in the technology that's that's why that's what i i, I feel like uh, to answer this question okay okay right so uh... There is another question uh, from Ms. Alka Call. Uh, she says, sir, if you may, I may raise some concern here of MSME tool makers. First uh -huh. is, customer do not want to pay the Indian tool makers. They do not mind paying Chinese and Taiwanese tool makers, but not to Indian tool makers. This is her concern. So I'm not sure mm -hmm. whether you want to address this or, sir. Yeah, then, then, no, 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 no. Why, 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 why? Yeah, if there is a question, that needs to be answered. See, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's something like uh, you know I I said that a customer doesn't want to pay Indian tool maker. I think that's not the right thing. Customer want to pay uh, the the global tool makers. That is also wrong. See, the the data speaks. Seventy percent of the tools are being generated are being done inside India. Do you think seventy percent of these tools are tool makers are not being paid? I think that is not the right one. When we pay to the Chinese one, the only thirty percent tools which we import from the China. We pay them. Uh, I, I mean, if, if if the comparison is that what we pay to China and what we pay to India, I think there is not much of a difference now. Five years back, yeah, this question was valid. Yeah, there was we were paying some premium to uh, to uh, Chinese toolmaker, Korean toolmakers that time. But today it is it is not valid. Today we 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 today this is this is not the not, not the valid uh, statement. Actually, actually we are paying equally to both the toolmakers. No problem. So uh, the second question is RM for tool fresh tools is not in, standardized in India as it is in the other countries. This does impact the cost and timeline of tool in India. Yes, I I talked about that. This tooling, I I mean, in, in my in my presentations or in my uh, discussion, I mentioned about the steel industry. Yeah, that is a concern uh, today, and uh, I think steel industry has to has to uh, do a lot of uh, work on that. Okay. Uh, yeah, that that that's I I I mentioned because this industry I think uh, was was suffering from for past long time and now it is uh, uh, shaping up. So uh, I think uh, that is uh, the, the industry has to uh, do a work. I agree with that. Okay. Uh, there is question from Mr. Arvind Chawla. 
uh, he asked, what is your opinion about the cost of tools made in India compared to China, Korea? And what is the comparison on timeline and quality? Yeah, there are two, two questions in the same question. I will uh, uh, take the first uh, questions, I think, or what is the comparison and the cost? I think these are the two things they have, he yeah. has asked. So comparison, I, say, I, I, I already mentioned that, you know, we are at par. The first thing is underlined is we are at par. If we, uh, uh, you know, the tools which are made today in India are anyway, it is, it is comparable with uh, China and uh, Korea. They are not doing such a great job that uh, Indian tool makers are not doing. The only thing is that these Indian tool makers are being not given, uh, you know, sufficient of, uh, I, I mean, the, uh, the help is not given to this industry by, I mean, the bigger, bigger uh, chunk of, uh, I mean, what we are waiting is from the government, uh, we are, we are eyeing at them. Uh, whatever capacity the OEM and uh, this uh, tier one are also uh, doing it, but uh, you know with a limited uh, uh, number of machine, limited number of limited limited amount of technology they have, I think their tools are at par with that. That is point number one. Point number two, uh, I think I answered this question um, back. Somebody uh, asked this question about the cost. Uh, we, we are not paying any any extra cost to China. I mean, you know. Uh, today, if I compare the cost of uh, uh, China and cost of India is almost same. I mean, uh, for past two years, China is at rest. So uh, we are, there is no comparison for past two years. But yes, right. we are not paying any, any extra money to China, for sure. Okay. Okay. And in terms of quality, I think you said at par with the global. Yeah, quality is at par. Quality is at par. What, whatever the tool make, tooling people are doing uh, here with uh, in comparison to any, uh, I mean, when we talk about, we talk already about China and Korea, but our tools are also far good. You see, only th again, I'm talking about the data. Only we bring, uh, bring 30% of the tools uh, from the, so do you think yeah. that 70% tools are not good? They are good. So yeah. there, there should not be any doubt on our, uh, our, our people. Yep. Perfect. So uh, another question from Mr. Anup Chavan: uh, What percent of imported uh, percent of imported molds in auto sector, past, present, and future? So, uh, yeah, I'm not a. I mean, I mean, I'm not an economist, and I don't have a big data about it. But I think today, it, uh, I already said that uh, uh, thirty percent are uh, are are being imported, and. Uh, the, these thirty percent of these molds are basically the large size of the molds, and the constraint today is, you know, there are only four or five tool makers in India. Those are capable of making this. Uh, when I say capable, please don't take it in the technology, uh, technical way. Technically, people are capable, but these are the four or five companies. Those who could have, in, those those who have invested on the bigger machines, so they are doing it. So thirty percent is uh, is uh, this, and I, my expectation is. Over uh, I, by 2030, this uh, there is no data to support. But uh, my expectation is this import should also go down drastically. I say I think we should not. We should be more talking about what is the export we are doing from uh, India in future. We should not talk about what is the import. I think that question should be redundant. I think that is what uh, my 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 uh, suggestion, and that is how I approach this question. Yeah, Prasanth. Yeah. Uh, this question from Miss Priyanka. Uh, in your opinion, how much additive manufacturing will contribute to tool maker industry and ultimately to the industry 4.0? Huh. Yeah, Nizan, this is a nice question and people are really uh, keen to know about it. Then, then additive manufacturing has gone to a different level today. You know, uh, yesterday I was talking to uh, Mr. Jagannathan. He was, uh, I think he was ex uh, BFW. Uh, he was there in uh, additive manufacturing Congress, which uh, yesterday only it was there in uh, Coimbatore and I was a speaker there. I was talking to him that, uh, you know, uh, you talk about the conformal cooling today. You are doing it by additive manufacturing. You talk about uh, the inserts, which are uh, the small insert today. That is additive manufacturing. If you want to uh, change, quick change your insert, you want to manufacture an insert today, that is additive manufacturing comes into picture. You will, uh, more than additive manufacturing, now the, the, the uh, technology has moved to, you know, hybrid manufacturing where you have a uh, 3D printing nozzle and it gets changed with your machining, uh, send, uh, machining nozzles and it's, uh, it's combination of both in the same machine, uh, same machine. And yesterday I learned that this machine size is now being extended to a size of a two meter bed. So uh, the, the, I mean, in, in future, probably we can see a complete tool being printed if we, if the budget permits to us and if we uh, take a right approach. Uh, so this additive manufacturing, uh, we are going to use the technology to print the complete tool. I think that's what, that's what the future of additive manufacturing is. 
right Shant, yes right. yeah uh just a couple of more question i can take before we can shut anyways we are running out of time so there is question from mr sharad can tagma oem and tier one can request msme department to reduce the tool skill import duties whereas we we don't have much options available in, in india i think this question is not only to me this that this uh, the part of this question has to be answered by tagma also Okay. Exactly. So, yeah. so yeah, as a as a uh, belong, belonging to the same fraternity, I think uh, I talked about it. Uh, this industry really needs support from uh, uh, the government, and uh, if uh, if something can be done, I think we are together. If uh, uh, Tagma and uh, the the fraternity of tooling if you jointly can uh, discuss to uh, MSME. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 free. That I I mean I I I, I can I can uh, see that yes. Uh, Unless until we uh, put our question to the right, we do something. Them, I think I'm not sure if the MSME people are aware of our pain. So that is something we need to bring to them notice uh, to their notice. So yes, why not? This is a. Uh, I mean, uh, everybody has a role on this, and together probably we should uh, tackle this issue. Right, and from Tragma point of view, I'm not the right or our authorized person, but I can definitely say with my information that Tragma is working really closely with Ministry of MSME and Ministry of EV Industries to, you know, talk that all the all kind of challenges uh, of tool makers and you know, uh, formulates uh, the industry friendly policies. So Tragma is definitely doing its bit on uh, such kind of policy changes. Definitely. Uh, there are. So just last question we'll take then. Uh, this yes. is uh, from Mr. Deepak. Uh, uh, your views on EV vehicle growth uh, as uh, your views on EV vehicle growth is sustainable for making tool rather developing in proto tools or can we see 3D printing is the only solution for small component development? See, there are three questions which are to one question. 3D printing is definitely going to help. And uh, you know, today why this question is coming to our mind is we are looking EV industry in a very small way. So we should change our uh, our perception this is going to be there uh, uh, this uh, uh, the engine components of this uh, this 3d vehicles if you if you separate this vehicle if you talk about the interior of this uh, vehicle i think uh, we this uh, technology of 3d printing and our uh, traditional way of manufacturing of toolings both are going to go hand in hand you know everything cannot be 3d printed or everything cannot uh, cannot be you know molded because there are limitation in moldings we go for changing in the we go to the designer saying that we need uh, some correction in the article but th th in that case if you see the the 3d pr printed parts are much flexible that is one so this is going to be there yeah but ev vehicles if i talk about i know this uh, this uh, this is going to stay this is going to stay this is going to change the the way we are looking at the uh, at the industry, this IC engines, uh, I mean, uh, when we are talking about carbon neutralizations and all those things which are coming and there is a target for this. So this is going to stay. And there is, I think there is no threat to the tooling industry because uh, this industry is not only serving to the uh, automotive, there are other, other segments on this. And I, I don't think so the, with EV, uh, I mean, a lot of things we need to think about is, yes, we have to pay, increase our pace of working. We have to increase our speed of working. That is what uh, is uh, key, key to cope up with the EV vehicles which, which are coming in. Yes, Nisant. Right. Uh, so thank you so much for, uh, you know, taking all these questions and uh, to the audience, if you have any more question or you think, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Das can answer, you can write to Tagma and then we can subsequently reach out to Mr. Das and he can answer those questions. So thank you so much, Mr. Das. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and experience with us. It was a highly engaging session and definitely we have all learned a lot. And on behalf of Tagma and Tagma management and tooling fraternity, I thank you so much for the sharing your knowledge with us thank you so much thank you thank you nisant uh, for uh, for this great opportunity which was given to us and it was really uh, interesting to you know connect with uh, so many uh, people and at, at one platform and uh, uh, I, I think i i should mention once again the role of tagma is uh, they are doing a great great work and there are expectation from uh, both the, the tooling industries uh, and from uh, uh, I mean, the expectation from the industry, from Tagma also, and uh, uh, I think Tagma is working on that way. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, thanks once again. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you all to all the audience. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much, and stay tuned for the next tour talk as we are planning 
some exciting things in the coming days. We might have, uh, you know, a couple of speakers or three speakers from different industry verticals. So stay, stay tuned. You will receive some more information about the upcoming tool talks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.